Uh, Jens, can you tell me how the biochemicals industry in Europe compares to the US in terms of its development so far? I think historically a lot of the developments have been actually made and started in Europe, right? And in the moment, if you look at the R&D pipelines and activities, I would say it's about equal. There are US chemical companies and European chemical companies pushing the, the next wave of development. Interesting question will be where will the te technology be applied? Right? Because if you look at the European companies, yes, they have the headquarters in Europe, but they're all global companies. Right? And the technology will be applied where you have cheap feedstock, where you have support for demonstration plants, and where you have a regulatory framework and public support that provides long term security that these investments will actually pay off. And which regions would they be then? Well, I think in that uh, sense, the U.S. would be more favorable. There's also countries that have cheap feedstock in the tropics, like Brazil, but also Southeast Asia, right, which would be uh, interesting places to look at. So what, what's holding Europe back in terms of the industry developing? Well, if you compare how the U.S. Um, has promoted biofuels, I think that's quite indicative, right? um, also for chemicals. There was a plan for research, and that plan was developed in a dialogue with academics and experts, and there were very focused um, research programs that were targeting the, the key bottlenecks. And for the next stage of development, there is support for demonstration plants, and here we're talking about hundreds of millions, actually billions if you add it all up, of support for the commercialization. And very importantly, there is a long-term framework that secures the demand for the product. Right. There is legislation in place that mandates 36 billion gallons of biofuels by 2022. Okay. Europe, in comparison, has support for the early stage research and development, but already when it comes to demonstration plans, it's much more difficult and the money is smaller. And in terms of longer term demand creation, right, regulation is quite unreliable and changes frequently, varies from country to country, much more fragmented and some uncertainty also about the, uh, the public perception, which can be positive, but it can also, be, can also swing. Um, so what, what kind of actions need to be taken in Europe to, to try and change that, to try and improve the situation? Right. Um, so maybe starting from the, the longer term perspective, I think there needs to be a, a vision and there needs to be public support for that vision. What role is the bio-based economy or bio-based materials and energy is supposed to play. Right? And that needs to be a pretty intensive and open dialogue because you also want the public on your side. And then that needs to translate into support all the way from research through scaling and demonstration right, into large-scale production. Um, and for that large-scale production there needs to be a regulatory framework in place that provides long-term security. Not the kind of biodiesel thing where there is huge support and there are golden years, right? Three, four, five golden years, and then it's reduced, and you have a lot of bankrupt companies. So, do we need a lot more long-term planning and support yeah, for the we industry? Yeah, need long-term planning. I think the investments, uh, also the areas that are being supported, need to be carefully chosen, right? Not quick things, yeah. right? That make you popular. You need to really think about what makes sense from an economic and from an environmental perspective. Right, set the right uh, direction, right, but then also hold it through and not let it swing back and forth. Okay. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure.